Julie. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Not much. Hanging out outside. <laughs> so, so that's your quiet place? That is. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of them, but outside is the only way that I can just kind of relax and focus most of the time. <laughs> is this your same uh, quiet meditation area? Um, well, um, I have a, in my bedroom, in my apartment, I have a meditation corner in my room. Um, and that's usually where I end up meditating outside. I, I don't know, I do different things. I do yoga or I um, go on hikes or really just anything. Sometimes I honestly just apartment living makes my body feel so weird that I'll go outside and just take my shoes and socks off and just stand out in the grass just to like breathe. It's weird, but <laughs> but it works kind of. <laughs> yeah, well, there there are a lot of good places in Northern Virginia for that, or at least there used to be. Yeah, definitely. I live in Maryland now, but there's a lot. Um, it's, they're pretty similar, Maryland and Northern Virginia. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that was the thing that I liked um, growing up in Reston was just that there were, you know, there were there were a lot of trees. There were yeah. a lot of la- there were a lot of lakes. Yeah, that's awesome about Reston. We don't have that everywhere. Yeah. Um, do you have like a, a certain place that that you go to um, for hiking and stuff like that? Because we we used to go to Great Falls. That was yeah. that was the area close by that was like the the spot for doing that. Yeah, Great Falls rocks. Great Falls is definitely one of my favorite places. I think that my favorite outdoor place now is probably um, Watermelon Park in Berryville. Have you heard of it? No. It's amazing. So you go down there. It's like, um, do you know where Berryville is? No idea. Yeah, so it's just out west, like down 7 um, a ton or down 66 past the plains. Um, and you drive down just a back road for like a long time. Then you end up at the Shenandoah where it's only, I don't know, maybe two feet deep in a lot of the places where you, you would go and you go down there and you can just camp like right there on the ledge of the river. And, um, there's like a playground there for kids. There's porta potties, there's a little shop and then they have tubing. Um, and it's just, my gosh, it's like your own private, like woods beach in Virginia. That's just a little gem. It's like $10 a night for camping only too. It's amazing. So that's what I'm planning on doing once my son's out of school, my son's six. So once he's out of school, pretty much every weekday um, that I don't have work, because um, I almost always work weekends, um, then hopefully we're going to go down to the river and fish and hopefully one day catch one. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. I love that place. Yeah, that sounds great. I can't believe I didn't know about that when I was living there. It's a gem. They also have a music festival there. It's... um. I don't remember what it's called. It might just be called Watermelon Park Fest. I'm not sure. Um, But it's cool. They do a huge music festival all along the river, and there's aerial pictures of the ones that they've had in the past that are just absolutely full all the way down the river with people camping and having a great time and, and networking over music and stuff like that. I haven't been yet, but I want to. What kind of music is it? I think it's mostly um, more folky stuff. Um, It's definitely not chaotic stuff, but I'm not sure if it's a huge range of music or I just assumed it was mostly folk. (laughs) But it's it's nice stuff from what I know. (laughs) Is chaotic stuff how you describe mostly what's playing at at work? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, more now than used to be. We used to do a lot more pop punk and um, we still do some. Um, and we do a lot more different things now. Like we do hip hop now and we didn't used to. And I, I'm i really interested in doing like like rockabilly or blues, jazz, anything. Like I want all sorts of eclectic stuff. But for the most part, it's pretty... I like I like chaotic music and it's mostly what I like that place there now. 
So how did you get into chaotic music? Um, I th- well, so I'm the youngest of ten kids that my that my dad had. Um, wow. Seven, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seven seven kids um, that in total, including me, um, that lived in my home together growing up um, with my parents. That's and chaotic. It, yes. <laughs> that's, yeah. So that's the start. And then my, uh, um, and being the youngest, it's always, you know, I feel like from my experience, at least very loud and obnoxious and, you know, all that at once, um, all across the board. So my, uh, two of my brothers, um, they, the brothers went first in the line of family. So the brothers are the oldest and Two of them were um, really into like uh, like bad religion and um, propaganda and um, like no effects and, and AFI and stuff like that. And um, we lived in Manhattan Beach um, in the suburbs of LA. And so um, West Coast skater punk is pretty much what I was raised on. Um, among tons of other things uh, because of my family being so big. So um, I kind of started off there, and then I moved from there to, like, all sorts of directions, emo, uh, um, lots of, like, sweet metalcore, you know, like, lots of <laughs> lots of things I don't really particularly like anymore or want to do a lot of at the VFW anymore, but, um, I still do sometimes, but, um, then I went to like, I think thrice was really what changed me to like heavier stuff. I didn't get into metal really until much later, much after I got into like um, like metalcore, you know. And hardcore um, is something that has grown on me over the years a lot more than it was in the beginning. But I I went um, I went pretty quickly into screaming when I was like. Not myself. I wish I could do that. <laughs> Sometimes I get really upset that I can't. <laughs> but um, but into listening to it probably when I was like twelve, probably. and then it's just escalated into chaos. <laughs> pretty much. Was that something that you just needed when you were twelve? Um, I think so. And um, the bonding with my brothers over music, and I just felt very attached to it. I felt something with it. I also love oldies and I love um, all sorts of different stuff, acoustic stuff and and quiet, peaceful things. But that kind of music was always what was fun and what made me like bouncy and happy and, and, you know, looking forward to whatever the heck I was doing. And it still is. Did your brothers play music also? Um, funny enough, I actually forget this often, but we, (laughs) we used to, my brother dabbled in guitar, um, quite a bit. And then another brother of mine, um, played drums and, um, none of us could really sing, but, um, we had fun with it. And I learned bass guitar because, um, this, I was in like fourth grade. I played harp actually. And, um, this guy, I thought this guy was cute and he played drums and his friend played guitar and 
I was like, do you guys have a bassist? And he's like, no, we don't. I was like, oh, that's funny because I play bass if you want me to, you know. And I went home and I... They didn't need a harp player? (laughs) Nobody needed a harp (laughs) player. I got sick of that very quickly. Um, (laughs) But I went home immediately and I was like, Steve, can you teach me how to play bass right now? (laughs) So um, my brother taught me, I think the first, the first song I ever learned on guitar, I believe, was um, Stay Together for the Kids by Blink-182, maybe Carousel. It's hard to wake up when the shades have been pulled shut. This house is haunted, it's so pathetic, it makes no sense at all. I'm ripe with things to say, the words rot and fall away. What stupid poem could fix this home, I'd read it every day. I don't know which one first, but I remember my brother, we were in the basement, him sitting me down and, and teaching me how to play this stuff on bass. I was like, oh, this is easy. I got this. Like, <laughs> I could figure this out. And I never went anywhere with bass. You know, I don't still play it. I still have one. Um, but that then the three of us would play and me and my two brothers would play. We would just jam music in the basement. Um, and that was like, gosh, such super special bonding moments because in a family that big, it's hard to find time to really, I don't know, everybody's different. Everybody's doing their own thing and everybody fights with each other so often that it's like when three of you can get together and, and do stuff and, and practice your skills, you know, that's another thing that's tough to find time for. And I miss that. Oh my gosh. So cool. Did you ever wind up jamming with the cute cute guy? <laughs> I didn't. Um, but he um he grew up to I think he went in the navy and his dad ran for president and <laughs> since then I've just kind of been like, hmm, I wonder what could have happened. So cute. <laughs> So was there um was there a local scene as well as sort of the um the kind of punk scene that you were into in Manhattan Beach? Were there, you know, local middle school, high school bands that you remember um, going to see? So I actually moved um from Manhattan Beach to Langley, um, Virginia when I was about nine, eight or nine. Um, and so my brothers may have, um, but I didn't know anything about that until I moved here. And my first concert that I remember going to ever was at the 930 club. Um, but yeah, but then once I was, um, I think probably 13, 13 or 14, I started going to shows, uh, local shows in the area and I went, um, Sterling Community Center was where I really got into it um, and went to shows with my friend, uh, gosh, I mean, like every week. It was like it didn't really matter what it was. We didn't really care. We knew that there were going to be cute boys there. We knew that the music was probably going to be at least decent, um, and it was cheap, and there was nothing else to do, you know, so um, when there's really tons to do in this area, it's ridiculous. Um, and so we went there all the time. And then from there, it was like, we'd find out about, we'd get to know people that were in bands and hear about other places that occasionally had shows like weird random churches and, and things like that when I was a teenager. And I loved it. And Jack's too. Then it evolved, you know. So what were some of those bands? What were the ones that you saw that were, that were really cool? Um, 
there were quite a few. There was a um, there was a band from um, Baltimore called The Perfect Kiss that when I was young, younger than 15 probably, um, that was, oh my God, I replayed one of their songs, a song called Equals. I replayed that song like every day for so long. I still listen to it. I still have their band t-shirt. It was a really cute pink and blue one. And um, there were a few other bands that were so cool. There was a band, um, Downtown Singapore, that was different. They were a lot more emo, um, but cool. And I got reminded of them. I saw somebody when I was in Baltimore for something, or somebody came and played a show um, at the VFW, and I saw a tattoo, and I was like, that looks so familiar. And it was the album cover for a band that I saw at Sterling Community Center when I was, you know, a teenager. I was like, God, that's so neat. Um, Virginia bands, I know, I remember um, in Alcatraz 1962 um, was one that everybody was obsessed with. Um, tons of other ones. I, I'm I'm mad now. Going back, not really mad, but it's frustrating sometimes now. Learning about what was in the scene and what else was going on at that time, and I was so much younger that I didn't really know about the other genres that were happening around here, and there were so many cool things happening. Um, so I learned these really cool things, but I had no idea that, you know, I was missing out on a bunch of stuff I probably would have liked even more, but I mean, that's life. Tell me I'm about sure. it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really the MO of my whole show. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's cool to reminisce. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these bands and a lot of this stuff I'm only finding out now. And right. I'm only finding out, you know, as I go down a rabbit hole and I meet, you know, oh, yeah. uh, one one musician, you know, who leads me to another, who yeah. leads me to another band, to another band, to another band. And right. I just find all this cool stuff. And I'm like, how was I not aware of this when, when I was a kid and it was going on and it was happening all around me? Totally. Page 99 is one for me that recently has just... It, well, until they started playing shows again, like, you know, little reunion shows, then it's exciting. But I was just like, oh, my God, this band is from, like, two blocks away from the Sterling Community Center where I did shows, you know. And listening to them now, I mean, past couple years, like, listening to them, I'm like, oh, my God, they're inc-. Actually, I met their bassist at a bar, and he said what band he was in. I was like, oh, that's cool. Um it doesn't really ring a bell. And then later I was listening to something else on Shuffle, I think. Um, 
maybe portrayal of guilt. I don't remember on shuffle um, or on uh, Spotify radio and shuffle. God, I sound so old. I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 28 and I'm feeling old lately. Um, but then page 99 came on. I was like, Oh my God, this shit. Ro- oh, can I say that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Ro- yeah. <laughs> like this shit rocks. What is this? I have to listen to this. Um, and I looked down, I'm like, page 99. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm such an asshole. Like I'll, I had no idea how amazing this was. And I so dismissed it. And, and then I learned about so many other cool bands and like majority rule. But then I learned, which is a, super exciting that no man exists now um, with, you know, the same people. And so it's cool. It's, it's like I learn about things and I'm like, dang it, they're over or dang it. It's, you know, that band broke up or whatever, but there's, Oh my gosh, there's so many new, exciting, awesome bands in the past, I don't know, five years, so much more than there were 10 years ago, I feel like. Like, music that I love is just, like, flowing right now. It's awesome to to be a part of it and to be able to share some of these new bands with a lot of people that I know would love it but haven't heard of it yet, you know? Well, how did you get to be a part of it? Did you always want to work in in music? Um, when I was younger, I wanted to like play violin professionally, um, and then I, you know, did drugs in high school and stopped, you know, paying attention to to my skills and stuff. Um, classic. And um, then I was like, okay, well, I think that producing music would be awesome. And that was kind of a goal for a while that that I wanted to study that in, in college and whatever. And then life happened and I didn't get to go to college like I wanted to. Um, and um, I went to, I did a couple music theory classes at Nova and I was like, this kind of sucks and I hate it and I'm not doing it anymore. So, um, so then uh, I was just kind of wondering um, after, after I had my son, um, I was like, I wanted to do something. I wanted to work. I wanted to have something started because my dad was, um, letting us live with him and supporting us financially, which was incredible. And so I kind of, I, I had that time to be like, what the hell am I doing? What am I going to do? How am I going to support my kid going forward? Um, and so I went back to school for early childhood education, um, just because then at least I could take my kids to work with me, you know, cause it's, it would be just us, you know, as soon as we moved out. And so, um, I was at Nova and this guy, Nate, that I knew from high school, um, <clears throat> I think I had had a Halloween party before then where there were a bunch of, um, military vets there, like Afghanistan and Iraq vets. Um, and, and he noticed that. And so he, he approached me at Nova and he was like, Hey, do you want to manage a bar? And I was like, um, (laughs) I've never worked in hospitality before. I have no idea, um, how to make most drinks. So I don't think that'll work for me, you know? And he was like, don't worry about it. It's an all beer bar. Like it's only bottles, you know, and it's a VFW. It's, you know, it's small. And to be honest with you, like, there's almost never anybody there. And it turns out, you know, the the manager was moving. The manager was amazing. Um, but she was moving to another state. And at that time, um, the VFW had just banned smoking um, inside. And people just lost their minds over it. Not the members, but other people that came. They they lost it. They were so pissed. And so the VFW was like so broke um, from people just, I mean, and they were struggling financially before that too. But that's right when I came in. It was just like they were they were genuinely worried for, for a long time that they were going to have to sell the, the post and not have their place to go anymore. And um, so... I, I ended up going and working there, and, and I was like, actually, I'm really good at this. And so um, I worked there for, like, six months, and I was like, how do I get young vets in here? And I did, like, beer, beer pong and stuff like that. Um, and it was cool, and it was all right, but it usually wasn't veterans that ended up coming. And I was like, what other stuff do veterans like? I was like, veterans like metal, but, you know, I don't 
I don't really know what to do with that right now. Um, and then Jax turned to Empire, and Empire closed um, in Springfield. And that was that was such a stronghold for this area for for music for shows. And I feel like once that was gone, it was like, what do we do now? Where where do we go see music? Um, and the 930 Club at the time had gotten weird, too. It had, it had moved to almost all, like, indie stuff because it made more money. Um, and it was just, everything was just kind of shitty in, that, in, the, in the scene. And so, um, besides, I mean, DC is always doing their own thing um, and, you know, doing well. Um, but yeah, so I went and I asked the vet, I was like, Hey, would it be okay if I started doing metal shows here? And I don't remember which one it was, but one of them was like, you mean like welding? (laughs) 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 Um, I love them so much. They're my family. And, um, (laughs) and so, um, they honestly just trusted me. At, at first, they were like, well, that doesn't sound like the kind of people we want here, destroying the building and, you know, acting up and whatever. And there's not a lot of us here, and so we couldn't really do security well. And I'm like, trust me, it's not it's not like that. Like, they're so considerate. There will always be one or two people that get shitty at a bar or at a concert or something like that, but this is generally speaking like the most well-behaved group you know in the in just the scene in general and um <clears throat> and they trusted me with it and they said okay if you can figure it out if you can figure out the the sound um how are you going to do door how just absolutely everything i just you know definitely not without advice um from other people especially um, in the beginning, gosh, in the beginning, the shows were terrible. The, they were so bad. They were so bad. Um, except, oh my God, one of my first shows was a Sound of Thunder um, a metal band with a super badass singer. Um, but that show was awesome very early on. And I think about that all the time, how lucky we were to get that footing with um, some really amazing people in the metal scene that were um, that have been you know around for a while. But yeah, I got so much help from Adrian um, from Domestic Terror at the Pinch, um, just kind of telling me common sense stuff that I didn't know was common sense yet um, about booking and about what to do and and how to make things work. Um, And it just got more fun and more interesting. And then the more people I met, like you said, it's like you meet one musician and then you meet another. And then through that, you find out I mean, God, now I know the most wild range of music from all over the decades. Some of my favorite bands are bands that I would have no idea what they were, you know, four years ago from, like, the cramps. You know what I mean? Like, just stuff that it's like, how did I miss this? But I'm now so deep into so many different sounds and things that you can get out of music and the VFW has become such a hub of people who love music not just musicians but people who love music that they you know my favorite part of my job is just being able to stand there and talk to 
anybody at any given time at most of these shows and learn a band I love that I've never heard of. And people will just share and we'll put whatever we want to hear on Spotify. People can just tell me, hey, I really want to play this album. Can you play it? Yeah, of course, you know. And we'll all listen together and we all just like feed off of each other in such a really cool way. Um, and I'm always learning new stuff. It's it's awesome. There's nowhere to go but just more growth, I feel like. It sounds like the best job in the world. It's amazing. And I get to bring my kid. He's got a room upstairs with a bed that he can, God, the vets spoil me. I get to cook whatever I want. It's, whew, I love it. And so what what do you mean by getting bigger? Um, just my, what I have been talking about with some other people, um, Adrian being one of them, um, there's a couple like of the younger high school kids that are, God, I'm, they might have just graduated or they're about to maybe, but there are some young kids in the area that are working their butts off and they know more music um, like the stuff I just mentioned that I wouldn't have known about, they know more of that stuff than I did at their age, you know, and they are um, finding a way to get back, I don't know how to say it, but to to get the kids their age starting bands again, you know, and I, maybe maybe it's just where I was in life that I didn't notice it or that I'm not aware of it. But I feel like in the past maybe 10 years, um, there hasn't been as much growth in the area musically with, with shows, with, um, with more bands, you know, just growth. Not, I mean, there's been stuff, but, you know, growth until, um, I don't know, the past couple of years have been crazy, just so many new things, so many shows everywhere, so many different DIY spaces popping up and bigger shows at smaller venues um, and so much more just growth of the scene and the, and the, um, the network. Um, what I was, what I was saying before about like um, me and Adrian talking about and, and other people just, um, also, Kyle from the drummer from Secret Society, which is definitely one of my favorite hardcore bands, um, and we we want to merge, not merge, but bring together people from like Baltimore, D.C., Richmond, different different. There's like different like cliques within hardcore. You know, there's different groups of people in the punk scene in DC, you know, there's so many different people in such a small area. When you think about time, you know, you, you might take an hour and a half to drive to work, but you won't go 45 minutes to a show that you would love. I don't think so. You know, it's, it's about feeling like you belong in all of those places and, and feeling like you have connections with, people in those areas enough to be like, I want to go to that so bad and I'm going to, you know, getting out again, not just looking on Facebook, but, but getting out again and, and driving that 40 minutes to go to another show, you know, and not because, not because we want to make more money or we want more people to go to our shows for money or for, you know, help people view us or anything like that. It's, we love the shows we love i mean uh, i've said so many times i love my fucking job during a show because just this incredible blend of people can come there and um and we're starting to see now that that baltimore richmond dc that that people from all of those places are mingling more they're networking more they're they're you know bands that i know from one place played a show that I booked, you know, with some band from another state and now they're touring together and they're best friends, you know, from shows at the VFW. It's, it's, it's a sense of you don't have to feel alone or stuck or not paid attention to or 
claustrophobic in an area where all there is is traffic and stress and money and politics and bullshit, you know, how much money do you have? Are you important enough? What's your fucking car, you know, to escape that all together and have, it sounds stupid and it's not the right word for it, but have our tribe, you know what I mean? Like have our, our big family and society of people who have fucked up lives, most of us, or, you know, maybe not, um, but can come together and have a cool place and listen to music and hang out. And it doesn't matter where you're from, you know? Well, how, do you, how do you think you can create that community other than just, um, you know, it forming those personal relationships? with people but other than that like what what are your ideas for for building that community and and building up a, a strength in that um i think the plan for me has always just been to get to get more just well matching things for booking at least get more like bands that may be like don't pay attention as much to what group follows this band. You know what I mean? Like a lot of promoters are like, okay, well, I know that this band brings 10 people on their own, this crowd. So we'll have this same band play the same type of show over and over and over because we know those 10 people. I mean, it might trickle down, but they'll come enough that I can cover the touring band. And to be honest, that's how I started too. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but to put together awesome shows, to put together um, bands that might not normally play shows together and just try to get the word out and try to get people to to promote themselves enough to to share it with different groups of people and have people that wouldn't normally come see or come mingle at all or be in the same be at the same show as another group of people, but they come and they're like, oh, damn, this is cool. You know, okay, I actually do like this. You know, because things sound different in person, totally different at shows than they might on band camp or whatever. So they might have heard a band, they're like, oh, that's lame. But then in person, they're like, oh, should I like this? And then more, I don't know, just mixing, focusing on making people happy. <laughs> So you're going to be like a cross-pollination like matchmaker. Yeah. Essentially, you're going to you're you're going to match these these <laughs> bands together from different scenes to it's try happening. to meet together all these people. Yeah, I mean it's happening. It's awesome. There's and it's not it's absolutely not just me either. There's there's people in Baltimore and Richmond and DC that are, you know, spicing it up. Things are <laughs> things are getting Things are getting really cool. I feel like I'm so I'm so much more excited right now about the DMV music scene than I've probably ever been. And I always thought that, God, oh, my teenage years were the best for shows. And I look back, and it's like it's the same shit that it was, I mean, in the beginning at the VFW. Just, like, I enjoyed it. And sometimes I get so paranoid at small shows at the VFW, like, oh, people think this sucks. This room is so big. There's only 10 people here. I feel like shit. Everybody's miserable. But I look back and it's like, God, I mean, that's what the shows were like when I was younger and I loved it. And I like, <laughs> and I romanticize how things used to be when really things are awesome right now. People are, there are some shows where people go so, so crazy, crazy. And People will look around like, oh, shit, are the veterans going to freak out? The vets will come in and they'll laugh and they'll point and be like, that's badass, dude. You know, like, <laughs> they love it, too. Everybody's just kind of having having more fun with it, I feel like, than, than it gets credit from myself. Um, it's, it's funny that you mentioned this sort of uh, Sterling Community Center theme. Where, whereas, you know, um, Jam for Man, which the, yeah. the anniversary show that, that we're putting on, 
Can't wait. It revolved it revolved around the Reston Community Center. So cool. You know, so we we had our own thing kind of going on in Reston. You know, uh, before you had this thing going on in Sterling, but in both right. cases, you know, it revolved around kids and their and their community center, and they wouldn't have had you know, anywhere else to play and anywhere else to discover this kind of music unless it was at those community center shows. Right. And I feel like yeah. DFW shows are are in that same vein. We're all here now about, you know, cause people will come into the VFW and say, man, I haven't played a fucking VFW since 98, you know, stuff like that, where I'm like, God, and back then, oh, my God, it was... um I don't remember the band. Um, American Nightmare. In 2001, I saw a video came up on Hate Five Six, and uh, and Dave Bird, I think, told me about it. And um, God, their best album they played. They had a show at the VFW, at my VFW, um, where it was crazy. It was packed, you know. And I look back, and I'm like, man, this has always been, you know. I'm not doing something particularly new it just kind of resurfaces where it's needed. You know, the kids show up where they can and figure it out, you know, at VFWs, at, at community centers, at, at churches, you know, fire halls. Um, yeah. And it grows and it's, and it means so much to so many people. And when there are reunion shows like, like you guys are doing, and when there are things to get people um, to really, look back after maybe being jaded by living in this area or, you know, just life gets shitty and hard. And then you can look back and think, oh, my God, when I was a kid, I was so stupid. You know, like, oh, my God, I had so much fun, just all this stuff. And it's it's so cool to see so much of that stuff happening now, too. Well, it, it's also cool because the, um, you know, the shows that were put on at that time were – were benefit shows for the homeless, so essentially, cool. and, and um, kids brought cans of food, and basically you could have it was like a five dollar ticket to get in, or if you brought a can of food, it would be two dollars yeah. to get in, and there were just like boxes and boxes for all the cans, and then for like clothing also and this stuff would go to the Embry Rucker shelter, you know, in Reston and mm -hmm. and, and go to help people. And uh, and that's what those those shows were designed to do. I mean it was it was Jam for Man is short for Jam for Mankind. Mm -hmm. And that was the idea was to just, you know, ha throw throw these things not just to, to provide the, the kids with a place to play, you know, that wouldn't get broken up by the cops, although, yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, although it was that too, but also right. to do it um, in the mode of, you know, the kinds of things that were going on in, in D.C. space that people had been to where the shows were, were, were benefits. You know, and it wasn't yeah. about anybody making money. It was about raising money to, to help people and uh, and just bringing them food. That's amazing. And I would love to do more stuff like that. Gosh, I would love for the VFW, ideally, to get rich so we could do all of our shows free. <laughs> so we could just have people come and, you know, be people again and connect again. But... Um, but I love that there, there are some places down, um, South Moore in Virginia and there are a couple of places here and there. There's, um, the, um, Metal Teresa shows. She does a lot of really cool benefit stuff. Um, and we love that. And we, I mean, it's so important for a lot of kids in this scene to feel like they have a purpose. You know, like that's so much of a feeling of turmoil that I've, you know, over getting to know people on the scene for a long time, just 
not feeling like you have a purpose or a place, you know, and to not only have a place, but to feel like you are doing something, that you're helping people can keep kids from getting out of trouble, you know, and doing stupid stuff or just keep them from committing suicide. You know what I mean? Like something that simple to feel like you're a part of something and you're doing something good is is so crucial and there's so much just sadness. It's it's cool to to help other people to feel like you're helping, you know? Well, I mean, the the shows that you do, they are going to, to help the veteran. Right. Totally. Yeah. And we don't have money to really make profit. You know what I mean? And and I'm a single mom. It's not like I'm making bank, but this is it is it's my only job and I work my absolute ass off. And I'm so, so, so lucky that it is my only job to focus on it. Um, but there will be nights where, you know, touring bands come through and um, there weren't a ton of people there and door is like kind of sad, you know, and it's supposed to be a 50-50 cut. I almost never do a straight 50-50, but uh, I almost always give them more. But sometimes I'll just be like, okay, you know, you guys take all of door, it's fine. Um, I'll tell my boss. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I don't get any, anything from that, you know, like the, all the time I spent booking and, and, and anything like that, a lot of the times is just because I love it, because I want it to succeed. Um, and so I feel like it's a miracle, you know, that we can have big stuff where a lot of co- kids come in and everybody has a great time. The VFW can make a little money. I'm less worried about money. Bands are selling tons of merch. You know, it's like it's not just emotionally positive. It's helping everybody, you know, live. It's it's awesome. Well, and I, I hope for, for the show that we're doing on July 21st, I hope to be able to set up kind of the same thing. Yeah. And, and if people want to to, to bring food um i'm i'm hoping that we can um connect with uh cornerstones the the food shelter in Where's reston that? oh it's yeah, cool. it's a, a food bank in reston cool. and you know provide them provide them with food and other other essentials absolutely so i i'm going to try to set that up there so that you know we can continue the exact kind of mission yeah, oh, that yeah. Was start, that was started 30 years ago. Right. And it couldn't be any other way. It has to be that way. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's so wonderful. Yeah. Um, I was, I'm, I'm curious whether you knew um, about any of the bands that were going to be playing there on the 21st, like ahead of time. I know it's a little before your time, but I was wondering if you had uh, been aware of, Transilience, the, the the band that's going to headline, mm-hmm. or uh, or the the Furnats, which is a young band that just graduated from South Lakes. So they've been playing a lot in uh, cool. in Richmond, but I actually haven't heard them at all yet. Okay, so these 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 are just some of the bands. Um, Rise Defy. Yeah, I know them. I love David. Okay, yeah, because. Um, yeah, Dave Stone was one of the guys that was really, you know, fundamental in the the, the Jam for Man scene of he that rocked. time thir- thirty years ago. Yeah, I mean, That's awesome. all all these guys were, you know, the guys that that put that put rest in and rest in like hardcore on the map for for us, you know, and, and oh, yeah. created created something that was uh, a means of getting into this music and kind of, for me at least, discovering, because I really didn't know about the the DC scene that came before them until I kind of discovered it through that music. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I, I knew about a veil. But yeah. I, <laughs> but I didn't even really know, you know, that much about about Minor Threat or Fugazi or Bad Brains. 
Yeah. Fugazi, surprisingly, was a band that I knew when I was much, 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 much younger, but not the others. Very strange. Yeah. I mean, so the, those, those bands were huge in D.C., but that was in sort of the early to, to mid-80s. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't until the mid-90s. You had to backtrack a bit. Yeah, it was yeah. <laughs> in the mid '90s that that I was being exposed to that stuff and exposed through these other bands that had kind of grown up on it and then decided to become bands because they were influenced by that stuff. Yeah, you know, and then they went on to to influence all the kids around right. them to either you know start bands or just get super into going to shows. Yeah. That's the best. The festivals like Snot Fest that we have at, at the VFW were all here. So many people say it's their first show and then they come back or they end up starting a band. You know, that's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it <clears throat> for me, it's amazing to go back and kind of discover all the different bands and music that have that have come out of Reston. You know, yeah. and the, and the connection to, to all these other bands. I just, um, you know, I just interviewed and, and put out an interview with Ron Winters from Branch Manager, mm-hmm. and I don't know if you're you're aware of them. They were on Discord, um, and you know they <clears throat> they're one of the the bigger bands to to come out of rest in, and I didn't realize his connection to all these other musicians from around that time to Colin Sears and Brian Baker and, you know, all, all of these guys that were in that, that DC scene, okay. you know, and, and, and these are guys that were in a band that were, you know, from Reston and, and claiming Reston right. as, as their home. So it's cool and it's your hometown and it's just like a suburb of something that's way cooler than yours, you know, <laughs> in theory. And uh and then you get your little oh, Reston, like oh that's so cool. <laughs> I used to get that way. <laughs> exactly. I mean I, I still feel that way, but it's also, you know, way to 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 then discover other music. Absolutely, that's so cool. Now I wanna dive back and learn about God, Northern Virginia in general, so many, so many gems I had no idea about that I'm learning about now, and then I meet the people all grown up and already out of the band, you know, and I'm like, oh, cool. Wish I was there. Uh, well, when when you see um, Transilience play this show, I think you're going to be you're going to be amazed. Should I look up videos ahead of time, or should I be surprised? Um. I, I yeah Tough. you it, it it's worth it to go um kind of do a, a deep dive I'll into die. them I think <laughs> because because the band that's being put together for this show aren't necessarily the original members uh-huh. so so um the only original member is going to be Spooky Rubin who um who wrote you know most of the songs and is uh, the singer and guitar player for mm-hmm. the band. But the the rest of the band is basically a group of rest in all stars from awesome. from different okay. bands like um the bass player Jerry was in L D Kids mm-hmm. which is another sort of like legendary rest in band. And uh and then the the drummer Andre um was in remission. Okay. Which is another an, another sort of jam for man band from that scene, and uh, and Jason Browning, who is who has played in a bunch of stuff and played with HR from Bad Brains. And yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, all the, all these guys are are vets from the scene and were in their own different bands that were really popular around that time. How did you, you end know? up at Jam for Man in the first place? How did you end up? Finding yourself. I mean, I, w- I was just I was just a kid, you know, mm-hmm. and we were looking. Did for a friend some- bring you? We were looking for something to do, 
Yeah, and it was, you know, it was just a, it was a well-known thing that was going on in town. Oh. It's like here is here is a concert that is going on in Reston that if you're under 18, you can get into. Yeah, and so That's awesome. you don't. You don't you don't need to to try to take the metro or something like that to get into DC to yeah. to go see it. You know you can you can ride there on your bike. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. So that that's that's how I I got into it. But even even when I when I got there, I didn't get to see sort of like the early bands. I was going to see some of the the later bands that yeah. were, you know, a lot of when this started it was like um eighty eight, eighty nine. So I was still, you know, I was I was twelve, thirteen at that time. So mm-hmm. I wasn't even I wasn't going to shows yet. The only the only shows that I were going to was like uh, the monkeys with my parents at Wolf Trap, and, That's uh, cool, <laughs> and, and 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 Genesis Invisible Touch tour. At okay, all right. <laughs> That's cool though. <laughs> That's awesome. The, those those are the only ones that. And then uh, you went head first into yeah. hardcore shows. But you know when they came to rest in the Jam for Man being in rest in every year and. Then also Lollapalooza coming to rest in because Lollapalooza was in rest in in like ninety one and ninety two. Really? Yeah, they they held it at um, at Lake Fairfax Park. Oh shit! That must have been cool. In ninety one and ninety two, so that that was kind of awesome. Also, that's sweet. I had no idea. Yeah, I'm still I'm Uh, still always learning about all this crazy stuff. Like, there's so much. I feel like all the time I thought such like I said earlier I've got such a crazy wide range of music but then I hear about you know I talk to somebody and then I feel like I know nothing you know like just all this stuff that I haven't yet discovered and it's all the time it's so exciting it keeps me Well the, there there's a ri- there's a rich history of it it seems in you know northern virginia in the DMV basically all yeah. all around the DMV and it's so it's so good to hear through you that that's still going on, you know, and that, and that for some kids that, you know, the VFW is going to be their, their jam for man. Definitely. Definitely. One of the vets was saying the other day and he says every once in a while, I'll hear him say to other people, I really think this place is the place where people are going to look back and be like, Dude, do you remember that fucking show at the VFW, man? That place was the shit. You know, he's <laughs> the vets are proud of it, and I'm and I'm super proud of it, and and not just for other people being able to go, but to be able to go and you know walk away from my bar for a second and go see a sweet show just right in the other room. I'm well, super should, lucky. You should be. That's it's it's awesome what you're doing. And um and and we appreciate you providing this, you know, space for, for us to do this. You know, we 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 actually looked around in rest and we went of course to the community center first. Oh yeah. Um and, and to Lake Fair, weren't having and it. to rest in town center and all these places and they weren't having it. They did not uh-huh. want to support this thing. And so we wanted you know, we wanted a place in northern Virginia and fairly close to rest in and that was just supportive and where where you know someone would get behind the the idea of the show because we know it's been you know it's been a long time but we wanted something that was also like thriving and and creating its own scene and creating its own thing right now that that was like that and so you know we we found that we're honored. Hey, and thanks to the vets. Honestly, they're they are amazing. That the stuff that they've let me do, the stuff that sometimes we've gotten away with at shows where I'm like, oh my god, that can never happen again, you know. <laughs> but the guys don't freak out, you know. They don't tell me I can't do it anymore. Um, they they've been so supportive, and they and they love a lot of the music that comes through. One of our guys went and saw bad brains in a church basement in dc in the 90s you know and 
Um, and it's exciting to do stuff like this and to, and to have them behind us, you know, to have it. Cause a lot of people will ask, like, you know, I know that you like the shows, but are the vests actually okay with it? You know, like how do they feel about the, the crazy music? Cause a lot of places, like you said, just don't want it. They don't want to deal with it, but they don't know that it is okay, you know, and for them to just, not just let me do it, but to enjoy it a lot of the time is badass. Thanks to them a lot for everything. It's awesome. Well, let me thank the vets in advance. Hell yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and thank you. And uh, hopefully everybody listening to this will come out on uh, July 21st to come see uh, Jam for Man 30 there at the VFW. Bring food and clothes. Yeah, yeah, and be ready, be ready to rock out to some oh, yeah. some re- to some rest and hardcore. I can't wait! Uh, I can't wait to dive in before then. <laughs>